We have a very strong small-scale processing sectors uh, on, on, on groundnut, which is uh, processing groundnuts to oil, but not taking all the oil from, uh, from the flower, so that we have a, a, a past, or I don't know how you could, could call it, uh, a butter, a peanut butter somehow, something like that, which you can make to uh, small, small fries, and which is also fried and, 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 and sold. And this kind of snacks has a very high value in, uh, in the local food, especially for kids and for young, uh, young people who are working in the industry as uh, apprentices. Or so. These kind of kids of, or people who cannot cook very quickly. So you can use that together with gari, it means with cassava flour. So you mean, you see cassava has a problem that it's uh, very, has a very low protein content and then you have this, this, uh, uh, this fryers, quickly uh, we name them, which uh, complement the, the food very, very nicely. And uh, it's an old tradition and it's still expanding in spite of the fact that groundnut production may not be following the trend. So the groundnut production is, seems to be one of the constraints. Now the aflatoxin, well, that's one of the reasons why we decided at the University of Benin to, to develop uh, a project on, on these traditional uh, uh, or let's say local uh, uh, food processing uh, activities because we know that there is some aflatoxin and that we should make quite a lot of integrated activities in order to keep it under control. It seems to be that when it is fried it's not such a danger than when uh, it is uh, eaten uh, uh, without uh, such a high temperature cooking. But all this has to be assessed properly, so we developed a multidisciplinary project with people from the nutrition science, from the micro, micro, microbiology biology sciences, from the uh, chemistry science, food chemistry, agronomists and, uh, and agroeconomists. So it's quite a, a nice uh, interdisciplinary project. And it is also funded on a competitive fund developed at the university, which is in itself also an innovation, so that's a, that's a thing. But I cannot tell much more about it because it's just beginning. We just made a, a, a common, a joint, a joint learning, a participatory uh, assessment of, uh, of these uh, small processing together with women and uh, farmers organization in the in the regions where we are going to develop all the, the research activities. So we went there and visited several several uh, uh, small scale units, larger scale equipment builders, uh, farmers, researchers and so on and so on in order to have a, an idea and uh, let them s explain to us what how they are operating and what are their constraints and opportunities and how the, what, what kind of differences there are in quality and in processes. So these were the issues we were tackling. Oh, it's just beginning and we, we are just beginning and we will have three PhD, nine MSc. So you see the last results will only come in five, five, four, four years, I would say, but in the in the meanwhile, we uh, will also make some intermediate publications, not for scientific audience, but also for, uh, for let's say, policymakers, decision makers, and 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 farmers' organizations, which are quite interested in, in the results coming out of such studies, which are half applied sciences and half um, yes, more ground ground sciences. Well, at, uh, locally or nationally, there is a great potential. I mean, uh, people are eating that uh, every day, especially, as I said, uh, people who cannot cook very easily or school, school children who haven't got any uh, canteen. So they are all fed on, uh, on, on, on that kind of products. Uh, now we see that there is a potential market in the Sahel zone, so quite a lot of these fryers uh, is exported to Niger, for example. 
So there is a, a market for the low segments of consumers because it's quite, it's a quite cheap uh, sources of protein. Now, of course, we c you can also package it better and uh, make sure that the quality is perfect, no aflatoxin or nothing, nothing wrong with the oil, so no, no bad products, and uh, put it in better packages and send it to the diaspora in Europe and Africa, who, who is very keen, because these are the kind of products, you know, these are your childhood coming with you, that for, for people from Africa, from Benin, from Togo, Ghana and Nigeria, they are all they are all been fed on that types of products, so it's, it has really a high value, symbolic identity value for them, so I'm sure there is a market for... Uh, well, now we, uh, we really have to ensure that the quality is okay, so we really have to know all the steps that have to be, to be kept in the process in order to make sure that the quality is perfect and then packaging is not an issue. I think even, even if the small, very small scale women uh, are trying it and as soon as they are uh, following the procedures, then we can have a packaging unit who buys or gets the product from this woman when it's packaged and, and then traded. So that we don't make any competition to this woman. I mean, this is also an issue because they are, that's, they are, uh, they have a, some knowledge about, about these type of activities. Uh, they have no other opportunities. So there is no reason to destroy their activities for the sake of something else. So it's better just to add something uh, on the top of those activities.